Welcome to the Legal Business Podcast from LK Shields, where we discuss the commercial application of the law and how you can shore up your business for success. In this edition, Pat Ryan, commercial property partner, provides an overview of key considerations before reopening a commercial premises post lockdown. Hello and welcome to this podcast. In the next 10 minutes or so, I'm going to look at some of the main issues for businesses reopening their commercial premises following the COVID-19 lockdown. To put my remarks in context, a recent article in The Currency reported that 79% of SMEs are in sectors highly or moderately affected by COVID-19, employing 768,000 people with insufficient financial reserves to operate at a loss for very long. Most business owners will not own their premises, but will occupy on foot of a commercial lease. The lease constitutes the contract between the landlord and the tenant. So a proper understanding of its terms and obligations needs to be at the heart of any plan for the reopening of a business. Firstly, I want to look at potential breach of covenant disputes arising from a commercial lease. Clarity around what are the rights and obligations under a lease is a vitally important consideration. Currently in Ireland, there is no legislation providing a framework to govern the operation of leases in times of crisis. Many leases have guarantee provisions that could entitle a landlord to seek redress from the guarantor under the specific terms of the guarantee where the tenant defaults and fails to remedy his default. I'm going to look briefly at some of the main lease covenants and related issues that are relevant. Payment of rent. As a general rule, tenants do not have the right to unilaterally withhold rent, even during a pandemic. In practically all cases, the lease will only entitle the tenant to claim a temporary rent reduction or other rent accommodation where the premises have been physically damaged or destroyed. A unilateral decision to withhold rent will inevitably alienate the landlord and ultimately could lead to litigation. It would almost certainly be regarded as a breach of covenant entitling the landlord to recover. Payment of service charges. When non-essential retail businesses and facilities were closed, certain services such as cleaning and maintenance could no longer be provided by landlords. In such circumstances, a tenant had a justifiable basis for requesting that the service charge, or portion thereof, be suspended for the enforced closure period. With the reopening that has taken place, any such justification would fall away when the landlord resumes providing the suspended services. To keep open, Many commercial leases contain obligations on the part of the tenant to keep the premises open for trade during certain stated hours and not to leave the premises unoccupied for a prolonged period of time. A tenant not otherwise required to close as per government guidelines may have made the unilateral decision to close their premises for their own commercial reasons. Given the circumstances of the pandemic, landlords in such cases may for the most part have taken the pragmatic decision not to invoke the keep open provisions in the lease. With the lifting of these restrictions, this pragmatic approach will almost certainly change if the closure continues significantly beyond the permitted reopening timeline. That could then give rise to an action for breach of the keep open covenant by the landlord. Quiet enjoyment. The corollary to the keep open covenant is the landlord's covenant to afford quiet enjoyment to its tenant. The landlord that closed a multi-tenanted premises, thus effectively shutting the tenant down, could be found to have breached the covenant for quiet enjoyment. With the lifting of restrictions, any justification claimed by the landlord would fall away if the closure continues significantly beyond the permitted reopening timeline. Force majeure and frustration. Force majeure is generally understood to mean an unforeseen, unexpected event 
which is exceptional, and whereby one or both parties are unable to perform their contractual obligations as intended. Most commercial property leases do not contain force majeure provisions. The Irish courts are unlikely to incorporate a force majeure provision into a lease as an implied term, even in the present circumstances. And this reality is all the more relevant now that the country has reopened. In the absence of a force majeure provision, some clients have sought advice as to the argument to be made that the lease has been frustrated. The tenant would have to satisfy the court that a supervening event not contemplated when the lease was granted has made it commercially impossible for the parties to perform their obligations under the lease, sufficient to justify early termination of the lease. I remain unconvinced that with the reopening for business, such an argument could be successfully made at this point in time. Remedies. Most commercial leases in Ireland are unlikely to contain a clause to allow a landlord or a tenant to breach their obligations without consequences because of the current crisis. Tenants in breach of covenants, such as the payment of rent, could have a judgment registered against them, and in certain circumstances may find that they are forced to vacate on foot of an order for possession. Guarantors could find themselves pursued for redress by the landlord. Communication between the tenant and the landlord is vitally important. In many cases, some level of compromise may be achievable and in most cases is desirable. All sides are going to have additional significant costs into the future and the Greek compromise will offer the best outcome in most circumstances. I now want to look at the COVID-19 and health and safety aspects. In preparing for the return to work, landlords and tenants of commercial property need to have regard to existing health and safety laws and the return to work safety protocol. The Safety, Health and Welfare at Work Act 2005, as amended, imposes obligations on both landlords and tenants which have ongoing cost implications and the first port of call in seeking to determine cost allocation will be the provisions within the lease. The return to work safely protocol in many cases may require works to be carried out to the premises. In situations where physical alteration or reconfiguration of the premises or the existing layout is required, it, be, it may be necessary to obtain the prior agreement of the landlord or the management company in order to carry out those works. Needless to say, strong and constant communication and collaborative approach is most desirable. Cost allocation. In most multi-tenanted scenarios, the requirements of meeting the increased frequency and intensity of appropriate cleaning schedules will have significant and long-lasting cost implications. Leases will need to be reviewed to ascertain what are the landlord or management company's obligations to provide additional cleaning or maintenance services. Where there are additional cleaning obligations, the ability of landlords to recover costs from tenants will depend on the wording of the service charge clause in the lease. In many cases, there may not be clarity in this regard, which points again to the need for all parties to look at how the costs and cost recovery measures are to be managed and paid for into the future. I now want to look at some common law obligations. Most commercial leases contain clauses obliging tenants to abide by all statutory law. There is the wider obligation at common law not to intentionally or negligently cause injury or harm to others. Where the risk of such harm or injury is foreseeable, the requirements to meet and discharge the duty of care would be greater. I believe that it is clearly the case that landlords and tenants as the owners and occupiers of commercial property owe a duty of care to take all reasonable and necessary steps to prevent the transmission of the COVID-19 virus on their premises. And I want to close with some conclusions. Have the terms of the lease carefully reviewed to see what covenants have particular relevance to the plans for reopening and the associated costs.
default under the lease may not be cost free, so be mindful of any guarantee obligations. Remember those other legal obligations that arise outside the scope of the lease. Active and coherent communication towards finding common ground between the landlord and the tenant will mitigate against wasteful and costly legal disputes. And finally, document appropriately what has been agreed for future reference. Thank you. I hope that's been of interest. Thank you for listening to the latest edition of the Legal Business Podcast from LK Shields. You can access previous editions from this podcast series on iTunes or Spotify. For more information or to subscribe, visit www.lkshields.ie.